75% of that post and you only have an inch that actually goes into the cast iron. I think it's the same. Hunting the many aisles of Menards, the hardware section. We are on our way to town and trying to get some parts for the tractor. Uh, I think we can fix the tractor without RK, but at the same time, I think we can do a better job. In fact, you might want to fix your own tractor if you have the same issue. And I'm not saying that it's broke yet, but you might want to fix it before it gets broke. Is that right? Is that how you say it? It gets broke? before it's broke because uh, that three point where you saw in my previous video how it broke at the uh, uh, where one of the arms attaches to the tractor well the problem with that is there was no support underneath that cast iron so even if it was not a, uh, a flawed cast it is still a very weak point without having any kind of reinforcement. So I think you could actually fix this for maybe less than 10 bucks. And if you wait until after it's broke, it's gonna be thousands if RK doesn't decide to fix it. Either way, I want you to follow along, be sure to subscribe, and we're going to get this tractor back on the road or back on the ground and ready to go. We're heading out to Rural King this morning. At Rural King, I talked to Jerry. So, I kind of hated you bringing it all the way down here, but that's what they wanted. So there is support, extra support yeah, on they got, this one. And if you look, they got the gussets toward the back instead of the front. So they know you're pulling yes, and you yes. need the support. So why didn't they do that on the 25s? You know, that actually makes sense, don't makes it? Makes sense. They've also got three bolts here instead of the two. Yeah. Yeah, because that's, that's category one also, right? I don't know. I couldn't tell you that. Okay. One. And then this is the 21. This is 21. And this is this is actually built. Yeah, you it's built by much heavier. You get all those layers in there. Oh, it's yeah. pretty stiff. Well, and it's got multiple mounted points. Yeah. Two, one, two, three, five on this side, five on this side. And it actually mounts up here too. So it's actually got more mount points. That is built much heavier. And it's a smaller unit. You see how much heavier built that is? Look at the RK55, which you would expect that to be heavier built. But the RK21 is much heavier built because it's actually got a frame for its three points. It's got six, five or six mounting bracket bolts on each side, not just two. And uh, what else did we learn? The RK24 is actually built heavier in the back. So he asked me how long I've had this, and I said, well, coming up on a year, I had one of the very first models come off the line. And TYM RK25 has a great product, but they've got a terrible rear end on here. I think we can fix it in just a little bit. I talked to Jerry. He told me, uh, and I got his, his consent, I am going to go ahead and fix this because I've got plans, I've got stuff to do, and the tractor itself runs fine. So we're going to fix it. Jerry said that'd be no problem. Uh, and we're going to make this much heavier. Because what is the point of having a tractor if you can't do hard work with it? Now I'm not talking about overworking it, I'm talking about the equipment that you buy for this machine. I'm just using the five foot grader. If you hit a root, that should not be voiding your warranty or whatever else may have happened, I don't know. But that should not be breaking the tractor. If anything breaks, it should be the three-point, uh, the implement. It should not be the tractor. And that is what we're going to fix right here. So, yes, I'm upset. You're probably gonna be angry at me for pointing out flaws in the RK25, but it seriously does have a flaw, and it is not built heavy. Here is all that goes into the tractor. When the three point, which holds on to it by 75% of that post, and you only have an inch that actually goes into 
the cast iron with absolutely no bracing, that is way too weak. This is just the first, and you're gonna be seeing lots of people have these problems. Because once we get through the first winter, which we just are finishing up with the first winter, and you're gonna see that iron cracks when it's cold much easier, this is going to hit us, and it's going to hit a lot of people. The more people who bought the RK25, who use it for actual work, and, and I'm not talking about for business work, I'm talking about for uh, actual groundwork. It's going to probably happen to you, even if you do not have a bad casting, which Jerry confirmed it looked like a bad casting to him too. So we're gonna look at this once more and we're gonna get this fixed. I'm gonna describe what we're gonna do. Right down here, we have the hitch bracket. These stop right on the edges. If they would have gone out just a little bit more, it would have given much more support. So we're gonna unbolt all these. I took one in to get longer bolts. We're gonna put another uh, steel plate behind this that extends from here clear over to here. We're also going to uh, fill this in and uh, hopefully hopefully with a piece of cast iron or a piece of iron pipe, weld that pipe to the uh, uh, steel that we want to put behind here, that bracket. So we're going to get started and see if we can get this done fairly quickly. We want 10 and 3 eighths by 4 inches. I got this piece of steel from C. Henry in Fort Wayne, Indiana. That looks like what I want right there. We're going to clean this up and then start marking it up. Let's get started mark this up. Okay, we got our marks in it. We're now going to cut this out. You're going to notice that I changed jackets. Yeah, well, we have to realize that when there is a higher power, you listen. No. Now that I look at this, maybe I will actually cut it at the same angle as this, but keep my outer sides. We definitely want to drill holes right here. Or we may just keep it square. We'll see how that looks and acts. Okay, we're going to cut. Let's put in a mark right there. This is 3 8 inch thick steel. I suppose if we go down the entire length rather than cut it off here, we would actually be better off as far as the structural integrity this way.
I believe this is big enough. <coughs> However, we have to drill it from the back side too. And we also have to make sure that all four of the holes line up from the other piece too. To make sure if it's perfectly <coughs> perfect, I'll be very surprised. Okay, fits in all of them. Let's go back and check and see how well everything lines up to this. Wow, I think we might be right on. Perfect. That does surprise me. See, look. Pretty impressive for me. Okay. That will be our backing plate for our tractor. I might go ahead and cut off a little bit of an angle just so we don't have sharp edges. Here's a quick tip. It's easier on one of these angle grinders if you're trying to follow a line to start from the back and work your way up. Because you don't have the sparks flying all over. Once you get your initial, once you get your initial uh, mark in, then you can go back and forth. Almost think it matches uh, the back of the tractor. Let's get started on step three now. So I don't have a really great shop here and I still don't know what step three is. However, I know what the result I want is. So we're we may have to try several different things. This is the three point connector on the back. This is where the part, the cast iron broke out right here. That was all that was holding it into the cast iron. And when that one bolt failed, it uh, the bolt didn't fail, but the cast iron did, it pulled this out. So there, there was nothing really holding that on. So it makes perfect sense what happened. But you can see this one, this ear on this interface here is broken, this bracket. It's not broken, it's bent. And this one, this is where the bolt was that did not have any damage, did not have anything. It was the one uh, where the housing broke out. It is fine. It is completely straight, no problem. The lower one that was holding on, it's the one that bent. And the bolt did not break off or anything. It was slightly, looked like it was going to shear at some point, meaning that it was holding just fine. So we're gonna try and bend this back and see what we can do. Hopefully, hopefully it works. And what I'm gonna try first is putting it in here. Like this. And then tapping this down. And we're gonna see how well that goes. Otherwise, we may have to do something different. I was originally going to try pipe clamps, but when I saw how short the part was going into the tractor, I realized that probably wasn't gonna work. But it could, it could work. This is actually working really well. That's almost perfect. And now it's flat. So, 
Plus one for the eight pound mall. Step three is finished. We're back to step two for a few seconds, maybe. Uh, there is a, a dip in the PTO, right here to accommodate the PTO shaft. We're gonna, I was gonna try to cut it out and instead I think I'm just gonna try to grind it out, if I can. I think this is looking really good. Got a nice edge, we got a slight bevel all the way around it. And we have our dip right there. I just found this. It's a piece that I made after having after the after getting the sunshade. Look at that. It fits. It fits. It's like a I went back and marked, which you probably can't see, but I marked where I need to cut to get my initial square of the pipe. Now you say, well, it's not square, it's round. Yeah, but I need to get my initial mark here and over here. We're going to cut this. Then we're going to start grinding it in such a way that it will fit. So this here is going to be the maximum and the maximum and that's going to be clear back to here then what we're going to do is uh, grind it down and down to try to get the piece that we actually want and need Here's our piece. Okay, we're making some serious progress. We've got the whole plate made for right back here. And now it should really protect the other side too. That both, both of these plates are, uh, excuse me, both of these sides are gonna be inherently weak. I would rather have the weakness fall on the implement. Some of this is gonna be some good estimating rather than actual calculating. We're just going to start grinding this down to try to fill in this curve. Most of it is straight until we get to there and there. Here's what I just reshaped. Look at that. That's not bad at all. I could probably take a little bit more off. That might actually just work like that. There. Most of this I'm doing by feel. Okay. I think we could grind a little bit more off. You can see right here how well this is going to fit. Okay. Down here, this goes on. We will slide that in. That is now flush like it's supposed to be. This here, we may have to grind a little bit off. Let's put our plate just like this, right over all that. These may have to come off.
probably wondering why I haven't done this before. If you're not wondering, I am. I wonder how tight that would be if I just tightened them up. Look at that. Look how tight that is. And I haven't even put, in, put the nuts, to put the bolts in yet. That plate is gonna make a huge, huge difference. I think I will put one of the bolts in. That way this can hold tight. Then I'm going to weld or weld attack here to this plate. I ended up not welding anything to the plate. This way I can remove everything very quickly. It's starting to get late, I'm getting tired. And let me show you what I've come up with so far. We put this on the tractor after we finished making it and it fits really well. It has a really nice radius for the uh, three point bracket that goes in but we still have quite a bit of space between the plate between the plate and this so I decided to cut another piece of that same pipe and bend it out so that way it fits and fills the space we're gonna try and see if that works if that works we're gonna weld this together I also have to cut that out I have a lot done now that we are wanting to do on the tractor, but we're not quite complete. And the last part, which may be the trickiest, is to get the screw or the threads that were there and torn out back replaced. And I'm not sure I need to actually put the threads in, but I'm gonna take this piece of leftover steel, if this works, and I'm gonna use it as tension against the thread so that way the bolt will stay tight against the existing threads and can screw in and tighten that way. I think if this stays tight, the rest of it will be fine. We'll find out. I don't know if it'll actually work or not. May as well take a chance and figure it out. Okay, that's our rough cut right there. Right here is our threads, obviously. And it's also not tight right now. But that will s screw in. Our piece that we made earlier, right here, fits nice right like that. Okay. We'll screw in the back back here before we're all done and i'm thinking that somehow we put tension on the thread right on the top edge so that way the threads themselves are being pressed rather than ground at least that's my theory the legs out of the way sure how much of a weld that you would put on. I don't think that looks too bad. That could be better, but I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, before we, uh, before we assemble everything, or excuse me, before we paint what we need to to stop the rust, we're going to do a dry run 
to make sure that this is right. I still need to make a new bolt right here, or excuse me, I have a bolt, but it's too long. I need to cut it to this size and get it ready because, well, this is, you can see it's a little crooked, a little sheared uh, from being back down here. It still bolts in and everything's just good, but I want it to be really good. This one will go back to its original place up here. And we are gonna get all this ready to try this all out. This is gonna hopefully tighten against that once the plate comes on it. This then will be able to tighten in just like it's supposed to. Will it work? I don't know. We got this cut off. So now that it matches the old one right there, or pretty close, I hope so. This is why we do a dry run. It's not quite fitting here. So we're gonna grind a wee bit more off. Grind a little bit more off here. And now I think it's time to put our plate on. That tightened up nicely. See what it looks like now? Underneath. Over here. This plate here now is giving a lot of extra strength. I don't see or feel any issues. We'll keep a watch on it as we do more things. We're gonna take this back off and Clean it up now. I am very happy with the results of this project and how much the tractor is working for me now. I think it, uh, this would be a great thing to have no matter what, uh, even if you haven't had damage, just to put a plate on like this ahead of time. While we are at this, we're gonna put uh, a new set of heavier check chains onto turnbuckles in this case. I started cutting and didn't realize I was cutting through the wrong thing here, so I had to weld it and fix it. We're gonna it. check and see here how all this is gonna work. We got these finished, the new ones put on, the heavier ones, and everything's looking good. So we're going to go and get some work done.
Hooking up the loader is not difficult at all. Uh, you might have to wiggle it a little bit, but it's actually easier than most three-point implements if you don't have the quick hitch. Uh, next, we're going to hook up the box blade. I'm not keeping the box blade on. I'm actually going to hook up the backhoe, but I want to see how this works, see if I have any movement going on. So I'm recording this just for that reason, but you can watch too. part we're looking at right down here. Let's see if we have any movement. Now it actually looks real good. Real good and solid. We're going to answer your next question. Your question that I've been receiving quite a bit is, can I hook up the tractor? You can't see it. It's outside to the backhoe with pats installed. We're gonna find out, I've never tried it. Here's a quick tip. If you don't want to lose your check chains and their uh, turnbuckles, because you know they can vibrate off, you can put a nut here, obviously, to tighten it, but that won't stop it from vibrating off if it comes loose. What you would want to do is go up here and right on the end, take your punch and damage some of the threads on both of these. That way, if they do come loose for some reason, you don't have to worry about them getting lost. Just right at the very end. Of course, you don't want to do that until after you've got your, your hooks bent to where they need to be. For all of you who ask, can you put the backhoe on with pads? The answer is yes, you can. Uh, it took me a while, but that was mainly because of the, switching these out and getting the angles right. But uh, yes, you can. It takes a little bit more finessing, but not too serious. Dion just bought an RK24 and he's practicing on the 25 because he hasn't got his yet.
try out a new toy. This is going to be coming up in a future video down in Kentucky. I want to show you what the RK can do. This here was a big pile of dirt that had the stone in it from over here when we cleaned it out a couple weeks ago. And with the piranha bar right here, you can actually scrape the ground so you get the dirt grass back. Yeah, that is if you don't cut too deep. But uh, there's a little bit more here that I'm not quite sure I can grab it, but we'll see. But it's just pretty incredible that it can do better than I can by hand. 